once could cry, or any cry. I've been at this church and had teachers, Sunday school training, and I think if I've been through service, I'm going to miss something. Yeah, try. Right. And I'm my pastor. If I've been through service, I'm going to miss something. Yeah. It would be my desire. I wish I had the ability to teach like that for my students to say, get up on Sunday morning. I want to go because I'm going to miss something. Yes. You look over there. Look at John after the crucifixion. Peter said, I'm going fishing. Yeah. He's going to lost his visual sight of Jesus Christ. He said, I'm going fishing. Yeah. We look around today and we see a lot of Christians that have gone fishing. Yeah. We see a whole world that's gone fishing. Yeah. But God said over there after the crucifixion, Jesus said, it's finished. The work is finished. Yeah. And one day he said, I'm coming back. Yeah. I'm coming to get you.
number 32. Uh, page 32.
in church anytime. Uh, uh, appreciate you. Appreciate the, appreciate the Lord this morning. Appreciate the music. Uh, appreciate Him being here. You're going to know He's here. <laughs> That's all. You may have a testimony this morning. I always give you opportunity. I don't know why I have to ask you. I shouldn't have to. Uh, but you mind the Lord this morning. That's right. Amen. Bless him, Lord. Bless your heart, Dustin. That's right. Turning your Bibles to uh, Matthew chapter 5. Matthew. 
Matthew chapter 5. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. You got your Bibles in Matthew 5. We're going to start in verse 1. I want to read the first uh, 16 verses. I want to concentrate on a couple of verses, but I want to uh, read these. You follow along with me. Matthew 5, 1 says, And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the poor, pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revive you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for greater is, great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt hath lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thence worth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill, cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let's pray. Our dear, most gracious and wonderful Heavenly Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we just thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for everything you've already done this morning. We thank you, Lord. For the singing, we thank you for the testimonies. We thank you, Lord, most of all for your heavenly presence uh, in this service today. We ask, Lord, that you just continue to 
abide and speak to us and just draw us closer to you. We pray, God, if someone doesn't know you and a free pardon of sin, that you would speak out of love and conviction upon their heart, Lord, that they would know that you died for their sins and that you took their sin penalty. We pray, God, today that they would understand that and just take you uh, into their heart. We pray, God, for each one of us that are here today, uh, whether lost or saved, Lord, that we will bring honor and glory to your name. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this day. And we get, I just ask all these things in your precious name. Amen. Amen. This morning, I want to preach to you. I've been, a, a, it's such a wonderful day, uh, Sunday school, so to speak, and mainly the service today. Everything seems to just be fitting right together. I love it. Uh, but uh, uh, with the Lord's help, I'll preach a little while. Uh, I want to talk to you today about uh, influence of a Christian. Influence of a Christian. And I want us to look at these scriptures here today. And I've read most of them. I'm going to concentrate on a couple of verses here. But uh, these beatitudes that the Lord has given to these disciples here uh, uh, is what we would consider, you know, uh, uh, to be a good man or a good woman. Uh, uh, you, you consider this, this would, uh, you, you would love to have somebody like this as a neighbor. Uh, that, that, that you didn't have to worry about things because there are some things here that you see here that there is a peacemaker. Uh, there is a poor in spirit it talks about. Uh, in other words, he doesn't overestimate himself. He doesn't think too highly of himself. You know, he keeps that pride down, keeps it out of the way. Uh, but uh, uh, we, we know a, a good man is merciful. He hungers for righteousness uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, uh, but we know this, that... Uh, uh, a good man, uh, he didn't say he might, he said he would suffer persecution uh, in this world here. So, uh, But uh, this is what Jesus considers to be a good man this morning. Uh, but I want to talk to you some, and we're going to look at verses 13 and 14 this morning, mainly 13 this morning. I'll probably get back on some of this tonight. But in verse 13, he's talking about, ye, ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt had lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be uh, cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. So we see this here uh, today that uh, uh, there's a good man here. He has influence. Uh, he's got to be the salt of the earth. There have been uh, salt substitutes. I know my dad has had them years ago. Uh, you know, you get some kind of health issues. There are certain ones. There, there was some stuff that was called no salt. I remember seeing that on his table. I may have a taste of salt, so to speak, but it's not the real thing. And uh, there's a great difference here uh, in our life today that we, we uh, sometimes we want to substitute uh, things in a life, uh, in a Christian life, in a Christian walk uh, that's, that's present in this world. There will be never be a substitute for a Christian in the world. Uh, there's just not. Uh, you are special to the Lord this morning. You might not think too highly of yourself, you may have low esteem, and that's fine. To some degree, we all should feel not to feel too highly of ourselves. But uh, the point of it is, is that the Lord loves us, and He said, I go with you. Now, if He's going to go with me, I can do all things through Christ Jesus. Uh, but if He doesn't go with me, I can't really do a whole lot. I barely will be able to get out of bed and do such things as that function. But the Lord's presence is always with us, so... We're the salt of the earth. Uh, you know, in the Bible, he talks about here being the light of the world, but I want to concentrate on the salt of the earth. Je Jesus did not say uh, it would be nice if you were. He didn't say that. He said you are the salt of the earth. Uh, you are it. And so if we're the salt of the earth, uh, there must be a process of decay. Understand this for a moment. Uh, it's like in the world. The world is decaying and going away. It is falling apart. I was uh, uh, in maintenance for a while. You, you guys that do that, you do it at home, whether you think so or not. Uh, you know, you got to replace a board. Everything in the world is falling apart. Some things take longer than others. Uh, some things, uh, uh, you know, you got to paint. Everything decays. The world's decaying. It's constantly going away. So, uh, uh, salt here, it doesn't cure corruption. It doesn't cure it but what it does, it prevents it from spreading. And you never know, and I know my dad used to talk about this uh, when I was growing up and everything. I, I, 
you ladies might not like this. I used to, we used to kill hogs and stuff like that at home. But we didn't ever tear them outside the way he did when he grew up. Some of you older folks will understand this, but they had a, what they called a curing house. And they put that ham out there and hang it in the building. They'd rub salt all over it. And they'd, they'd go back and rub salt on it again. They'd keep rubbing salt on it for a period of time. And uh, what it done, it kept it from decaying and rotting it. Uh, uh, my dad said three months from now they'd go out there and cut a slab off of that and have it for supper. It's still good. The salt prevents decay. The Christian is supposed to be that way. He's supposed to prevent the things around us uh, from decaying. So we see here, and the, uh, Jesus here says Christians are the salt of the earth. Uh, you get this idea here that if we were not here, the world would soon corrupt and go away. Do you understand that? The, the world doesn't think that we're valuable. And I understand that because the, Jesus said, I'm not of the world. The world hated him. The world will hate you. It's a given. Uh, but the point of it is, uh, is if we're not here, the world will soon quickly corrupt and go away. We, it just falls apart and it does this. So uh, uh, we have an obligation and a responsibility as a Christian to share the gospel. What's the gospel? It's simple. The gospel is not being something I don't have to go and get a 10 year degree to know what the gospel is. It's understood by little kids, little children that are here today. The gospel is so simple. What is it? Jesus Christ, Him dying on Calvary for my sins and being buried and raised the third day and sits at the right hand of the Father. He, he was upon earth. He lived a sinless life. He died on Calvary. He says at the right hand, he said, if I go away, I come again. He's coming back for you and I. That's the gospel. That's the gospel. It don't matter. You can put it in a different form. You can preach it in a different way. But if it doesn't come back to Jesus Christ, it's not the gospel. But Jesus Christ has to be the center of the gospel. Uh, uh, and that's what the gospel is. Uh, your wife may get on to you at home, guys, and say, boy, she went to preaching to me the other day. But she wasn't preaching the gospel. Because if she, unless she brought up the Lord and you need to straighten your act up for the Lord get a hold of you, it's not the gospel. Uh, the gospel is Jesus Christ and Him saved and Him crucified. But let's look at things that what salt is. Salt's pure. There ain't no defect, there's no defects in it. It's pure. Uh, it, it's pure in our heart too. Uh, the gospel, the Christian, the, the, the blood sacrifice, atonement on Calvary. It, it's a pure act. Uh, it, it, is, it was accepted by God, the Father of Jesus Christ. If it wasn't, He wouldn't have accepted it. Uh, he wouldn't have raised Him from the dead. He wouldn't have uh, come out of the grave. He, he wouldn't have been it. But all of it was satisfied to the Father. He lived it to the fullest teaching. But us as Christians, we're to be an example of purity. There's something in our lives that needs to be pure. There's never a danger of being too pure in this life. You can't get too good. Oh, you say, well, uh, goody two-shoes. Uh, you cannot be too pure. The pure it is, they still refine gold to this day. They'll sell you gold at the jewelry store. And you ladies, I've talked about this before. Y'all like it when them guys bring that stuff home. But it's, it's sometimes it'll say, it's a purity. Is it 100%? I don't know. A lot of times they're probably 99. Uh, but uh, Christianity or salvation, salt, and Christianity is 100% pure. But it has to soak into us and get into us. It has to be part of us. It's thought that you, uh, uh, you know, a thought that you're a Christian. You know, uh, a lot of times we're at an office or we do things in the world. And the, uh, the world just carries on. But I tell you what, you mess up as a Christian. You say the wrong thing in an office. If you worked in an office or you met somebody at the store and you've done something wrong, boy, they'll point it out just like that. They'll say, I thought you were a Christian. I mean, they, we're under a mind. You, know, you may not like it, but you're under a magnifying glass. The, for, you're a light upon a hill, as he said. The world, uh, uh, you're, the, the, God has set us up, so to speak, that, we, that they want to see Jesus Christ in us. And what He's wanting to do is not about us, but He's using us to draw Himself and people to Himself. And, and we're to share the gospel. We're to share the gospel. So, 
Uh, we see that when we uh, uh, have that in a uh, working uh, environment. Uh, uh, and sometimes they say, you know, you're not Christ-like. You're not doing the right thing. But also salt. It, it, it cleanses. It cleanses. You can watch Old Western. My wife don't like it. My dad, I, I think I may have shared this here. He has a few cats. Uh, you, my wife don't like this, but it's a pink eye and a cat. My dad will take a handful of salt. It's an economical way of doing it. That cat, he'll douse that salt in that eye. It'll run. It'll clear it out. It'll cleanse you. Uh, but we see that sometimes. Uh, how many people have brushed their teeth before with salt? I read this this week. Some people did growing up. Uh, some people uh, have to use baking soap. I've done that a lot. Uh, question is, how many really brushed their teeth? I hope all of them have. Okay. Uh, uh, but uh, today, uh, but we see that uh, salt is actually in toothpaste. Uh, it, it's just a fine ingredient in that toothpaste that we use. It's there to cleanse us. It's there. It's used, my, mother, my grandmother used this a lot as a mouthwash. We'll wash our mouth out with salt, warm salt water. It, it, it cures, it cleanses us, it takes care of it. We, we like that. Time. We have that effect on us. We, we need that effect on us to cleanse the people at work. So, uh, uh, salt can clean up things. It cleans up government. It cleans up the schools. It'll clean up a church. Uh, because it's pure. It's, it, it's nothing false about it. You know, I used to hear a lot like this, uh, and it's probably a true pastor said this one time. You take a new believer Christian, and he'll come to the pastor and say, uh, uh, I see this and this and this. What it is, is he's, he's picking out the things probably that you and I have been so accustomed to of, of being in the church and being a record member. He's noticing something new. Uh, uh, it's fresh to him. And I, I heard some preaching this week, and you know, you remember when you first got saved? Oh, I was excited. I wonder sometimes I ask myself, what happened to it? I mean, I still get excited and everything, but boy, I was on cloud now. I, you know, and he's still the same yesterday. Kenny says he's a yesterday, today, forevermore. He's not changed, he's on the throne. Uh, so uh, it's there for the getting, uh, so to speak. But it also seasons. And we like that. We're talking about dinners and stuff. We like this. But it changes the flavor of things, salt does. Uh, we Christians should have a seasoning influence. You should have an influence of people around you. Uh, it should, you should give them some flavor uh, to it. And, and want, it doesn't take much to season anything. It just takes a little salt. Uh, the trouble today, a lot of people uh, doctrinally, you know, uh, and it goes back to what I was talking about about the Lord Jesus Christ a while ago. Doctrinally, most churches, I'm not saying everyone, uh, there are very few compared, especially here in the South, but I'd say they're all pretty much doctrinally sound. And then what this means is they believe in the virgin birth of Jesus Christ, that the Holy Spirit come upon Mary and, and uh, He was born. Uh, the second one is the blood atonement for sins, that He died for my sins on Calvary. Uh, uh, and uh, the word of God is true. Uh, uh, the resurrection is something that happened is of absolute fact. And the second coming, or and the word of God is true. Uh, the second coming of Christ is inevitable. It's going to come, and we look forward to it coming and want it to come. But the doctrine is sure and true. There's no, there's no doubt that uh, you know a true Bible believing uh, church. Doctrinally, uh, whether it's me back there or teaching in Sunday school or the singing, it should all center on Jesus Christ. I think that's probably pretty true for most things around, and I'd say for here at Mount Carmel, uh, that's absolute. If it didn't, I, I, I talked to mess with my wife about this. I've told other people. If I got up here and done something, I would expect one or two of my deacons to just come on up and ask me to go and sit down. Uh, you say, well, that's just rude and that's out of place. No, it's not. Uh, because it's not, uh, 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 the Scripture is true. Uh, it's absolute truth. I do my best to preach it. You should go home and read it. And it, 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 I do not intend and never do to mislead. But we see here 
that the doctrine is true. But, and that salt is what it's about. But our experience sometimes, as I was talking about a while ago, as we get older, it seems sometimes that flattens out. It ain't there, it's the way it was. Charles Spurgeon once said, some Christians would make good martyrs. They, uh, they are so dry, they would burn well. Listen to that for a minute. Uh, and I've been here uh, almost a year. It's your relationship. I've been saved, forever will be saved, uh, uh, waiting on the Lord to come back. But my relationship, I work on constantly. I go this way, this way. Hopefully, uh, we want to stay close, don't we? And that's our, that's our goal. But salt has a seasoning influence. It makes food taste better. It makes its presence known. And we'll, we'll see this about ice cream. Uh, we went to a dinner probably two or three years ago. Aunt Sam did with her cousins. And I, I'll talk about this for, in a moment. But y'all make homemade ice cream. This is this time of year. What's so big about I, uh, salt? It's not no problem. It don't go in it. But it is nothing but liquid I, when I put it in there. But you put that salt on that ice on the outside, what does it do? It speeds it up. It draws it. It makes the things on the outside might not be too good, but that on the inside, there's not a person in here that don't raise their hand and say, boy, I just hate homemade ice cream. It's the worst thing they ever come up with. It's just terrible. I wish they'd just quit making it. Uh, because it makes that on the inside very good. But my, my wife's cousin years ago uh, uh, was making homemade ice cream. For some reason, the salt got in the Inside the ice cream. Hmm. A little salt probably wouldn't hurt, but he had a pretty good bit in there. I think he put it in there instead of the sugar. <laughs> well, that cows, man, you can't eat it. This morning, you know, a lot of times we take that salt and uh, we, we are in the world and we, know, we go up against it and we, we go out to it every day and people, but... I know it feels like sometimes that you're not doing anything and the world's against you. But I want to encourage you today. You are the salt of the world. You do make it better. It may not be evident. It takes a little while. I used to have to do the hand crank deal, you know. It ain't instant ice cream. It takes a little while to crank and to make it. And it takes a little time for us to reach those folks that we're in contact with each day. But if you'll put yourself up against them, you'll, you'll change the inside of them. Not that you can yourself, but you can demonstrate the purity of that salt. And they will know and want to know something about you that you are showing in your life. Salt also makes one thirsty. I heard me and the guys that went down, we heard Tony Evans say this. I uh, read it again this week. Uh, people, a lot of times, we, we, we uh, speak to people and we try to uh, talk to them and try to get them saved and uh, tell them about the Lord and they just seem like they won't, don't want it and they won't accept it. But, uh, you know, uh, Tony Evans said this, and I, as I said, I read this week, you, you've heard this many times, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Remember that? You know, the thing about it is, but the key to it is, you can give them salt, though, and you keep pouring the salt to him, in a few minutes, son, he'll drink all the water he can get his whole hands on, whether it's a horse or what someone else. The point of it is, is if we're the salt and we go to him all the time, eventually they will want to know about the Lord Jesus Christ and want that and thirst after that, what? Righteousness. Thirst after, want to know who the Lord Jesus Christ is. So uh, we're here and we do that, but it's up. Uh, we have that. Salt in a shaker don't help nobody. You know that? And salt, when it's poured out, it's sprinkled on um, uh, things. It, it makes everything better, as I said. It's a little here and a little there. Uh, we never throw it in a pile. We're spread out. You read that in the Gospels. Uh, a persecution come, and the church was divided. It spread. Individual went here. Individual went here. A little salt there. A little salt there, a little sprinkle here, and the gospel spread. See, the salt is you. 
And this morning we see that. We take, we take this and we see this. But I want to tell you this. This morning how precious that salt is. There was a story of a man carrying his Bible to work. And he had his Bible in one hand, his lunchbox in the other. And he would go to work and everything. The devil kept staying on him and tempting him. Told him nobody wanted to say the Bible. And he convinced him, so well, it's just sticking in your coat when you carry it in. So he carried it in in his coat, put it in under his coat, carried it in. Then he got out and he started reading it at break and everything. And, and the, uh, the devil come back with another temptation. Said, oh, people are looking at the Bible too much. They don't want to see your Bible. So put it in your pocket. And uh, uh, so he put it in his pocket for a little while. And, uh, 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 then he uh, got under conviction, uh, so to speak, in his... Uh, 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 Satan kept bothering him and, and, uh, and the Lord uh, dealt with him. His conscience started bothering him. And uh, so he come up with an idea of to resist the temptation of the devil. And what he done was he, he went and bought the biggest bottle that he could find and the biggest one. And he, he would, it took both hands for him to carry it into work. And the devil come to him and said, uh, you need to put that in your pocket uh, where they can't see it. He told him, he said, uh, it won't fit my pocket no more. Uh, in other words, he, might, he got out of a place uh, to where the Lord or the, uh, Satan would tempt him with. He got away from that by, by excluding that for him. So this morning, we're the salt of the earth. And we, we, you know whether or not you go to school, on your job, or whatever you do, we are that salt this morning. And uh, we're to... We're to Bring that salt, that Christian atmosphere wherever we go. Jesus taught, I mean, I read the Bible just like you do. Daily reading. Jesus said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Uh, he also said, "Where basically, wherever you go, I'll be with you. Since I, I've said this before. Ever since I was 13, he has resided right here. Now, I have not let him have full Chambers of it. In my walk of life, I would say you can have part of it. I've been in places that he probably didn't want to go. I've said things I shouldn't say, but I've grown up some and tried to do a little better. We're not perfect, but we're to strive to live a pure life. It doesn't mean we're supposed to be perfect, but we're to strive to be like Christ each and every day. This morning, while the Lord and they come and uh, with the music this morning. What is your life? Are you close to Him? And you show that salt. Is it revealing to you? Is it revealing? Does people know that you're a Christian uh, when they see you? Uh, do they know that you've got Jesus Christ in your life this morning? Why you stand to your feet?